Good evening. Um, welcome everyone to Council Chambers. We are reconvening at uh, 6 p.m. this evening. Um, first, we're going, oh, sorry. First, I've got something to read. Today, today, we recognize the Indigenous peoples as the customary keepers and defenders of the Great Turtle Island, its waters and its lands. We honor their long history and welcoming others to this beautiful territory. Our aim is to uphold and uplift their voices and values as our host nation. So I'd like to turn it over to uh, Councillor Luciani with the adoption of the agenda. Yeah, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Parker that the agenda as prepared for the council meeting of February 13th, 2023 with agenda item 14.7.1, which is staff report RCP 23-08 Lake Lisger Water Park Renovation Award of Tender being dealt with immediately following agenda item 7.1 which is A plus link architecture re schematic designs and floor plan of Lake Lisker Water Park building. And that agenda item 14.4.1, finance 2305-2023 draft budget summary and recommendations be dealt with immediately following agenda item 14.7.7, .7, which is uh, RCP 2313 fire hall mold remediation be approved. Thank you, Councillor Luciani. Sorry, I'm just double checking a number because I think there it is at 14.7.4. So for the um, RCP, just so council notes, it's agenda item 14.7.4, not 0.1. Sorry, I had caught it right before the meeting and then I forgot to. Any questions, concerns regarding the agenda? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? And that's unanimous carried with none opposed. Disclosures of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. Seeing none, adoption of council minutes. Council Roser. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Move by myself, second, whoop, sorry. Move by myself, second by Councilor Spencer, that council meeting minutes dated January 24, 2023 be approved. Thank you. Questions, errors, submissions? Council, seeing none. All those in favor? And that's carried with none opposed. Now we're moving to presentations and we have um, a very exciting project coming up with which is the uh, refurbishment of the uh, building that's located at the Lake Lusker Water Park. Um, so we have A-Link Architects to present. And your Ed, welcome Ed to council. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, your Worship, members of council and uh, staff of uh, the town of Tilsonburg, thank you for inviting me this evening to share an exciting project uh, that we've been working on within our firm for the last number of months. Uh, as you can see on the slides uh, that I'm projecting up, up, up front, uh, we have the facade of the existing Lake Lisger uh, water park uh, bathhouse. And what we're doing is a total retrofit of the existing facade and the interior of the building. So I'll just go through some exciting slides of the exterior renderings and internal works that we're uh, taking on. So we're adding a lot of color and a theme of uh, the water park. Uh, and we're hopefully putting some color and really sprucing up the facades of the building to make it a very dynamic space um, as you approach the building and try and understand that it's part of the, the water park and the pool facility. So we, we have a captain's booth uh, at the very beginning, which is where uh, the, uh, the area of the, the customer comes in and we're, we've got a mast feature um, and some signage at the front of this. So we've added a lot of color to the building to um, animate it um, as you approach it. So, and you can see the various things going on with the uh, water feature concept and the portholes and the materials and the color and the murals that uh, are posted on the facility it, itself. Um, as well, we're hoping to address the approach as you walk up to the facility. And uh, this is one of the facades. It's a very plain building to start with, and we have a very, very limited budget. So what we're trying to do is animate it with 
very economical approach um, and uh, some fun mural features. And so I think you can uh, see that uh, we've addressed all the facades and made it really a playful feature for all the, the kids and the, the children to uh, enjoy the water park. So from a site perspective, we're creating this uh, front entry area uh, with a port uh, for the boat feature and the extension off the existing uh, connections from uh, the trail and the pathways and the existing buildings. So we're making a very dynamic uh, walking walkway to the building and, and from the building. And, and then internally, we're uh, going to a concept that is very uh, important right now. It's gender neutral. Um, there's a lot of change facilities. There's common showers. There's universal washrooms. So we're doing a total upgrade of the interior to meet the modern approach to change areas for uh, pools. So we basically have the center core as uh, the common work area for staff. And then to each side of that would be uh, the change areas, which have personal change areas, it has family change area, and it has universal washrooms on both sides. So, and then showers as you uh, enter the pool area and then come back from the pool area. So it's also a very open concept. So uh, we're trying to remove all the barriers to make it very, very AODA uh, friendly and accessibility friendly. Uh, to the point that we've stepped it up and over above the Ontario Building Code. So I just want to quickly talk about uh, the tender process that we went through. So we received 11 bids uh, during the tender period, and nine of them were very competitive. So it was a really good uh, tender uh, period this spring. Uh, the average $1.59 a uh, million dollars. Two bids were high above 1.8. I think they were just testing the waters more or less, but to have 11 bids was really good uh, this early part of the year. So all bids, however, were over budget, which is where all projects seem to be going right now. So we had an approach. Uh, PK construction was a little bitter and, you know, they're local. We've worked with them before. We like working with them. They're very hands-on. They're very uh, how should I how should I put it? They like to work with you as a client, as an architect. So we, we really enjoy working with the, the gentleman's gentleman at PK. Uh, their bid was 1.498, so they were low. Um, and what we did was we engaged the low bidder uh, to perform, perform some value added engineering uh, recommendations for cutbacks and cost savings to bring it to a manageable budget that Julie and her team wanted to see. So we ended up in, I think, two or three days, uh, PK came, came back with uh, $365,000 of savings, uh, which was phenomenal in uh, that short period of time. Um, we looked at things that could be added in the future or just weren't as important to the whole philosophy of the design as we thought. Um, so the canteen addition could be a future item. There was a concrete planter that just didn't make sense after it priced out at a whole lot of money. So there's just some features you just, right? You like to have, but you know, um, they're not necessary. Uh, circulation pumps were an, an add to see if we can get them in, but they're not necessary, necessary to uh, replace uh, for a couple of years. So we, we did try and see what the cost of them would be. There were some minor landscaping items. And then we did a, a uh, high level review of alternate materials, which PK brought to the table and said, if you'd use this material, it'll be less and it's available, et cetera. So um, thanks to PK for helping uh, with that process. So the lowest bid was 1.498, cost savings 365, uh, revised total 1.133. And so um, to conclude our presentation, we're uh, recommending that you enter into a CCDC contract uh, with PK construction as soon as possible so um, we can get materials ordered and get the project underway. Any questions? Thank you, through the mayor. Um, we saw some of the things that were sacrificed and they're listed here on page 12 of our PDF. You talked about the canteen addition, the concrete planters and so on. 
The canteen addition, would there be a breakdown? That is a revenue generator. Yeah, it's $265,000. Yeah. Right. That answers my question. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Parker. Through you, uh, Miller Gilhazy, to uh, Mr. Vander Merrill. Um, the, what's the lifespan on the paint on the building? I'm just worried about fading. I, I think it looks, it, it looks awesome, but I've got concerns with going with a dark color like that and seeing colors fade over uh, a short period of time. Yeah, what you'll find that with it, currently you'll get epoxy paints that can last 20, 25 years, um, especially when we're using, they use specialty paints for murals as well. So um, but we only specify the best in terms of exterior materials. So we know, you know, the longevity of that is very important. So. Perfect, thank you. Councilor Rosehart. Julie. Thank you, through Mayor, just Councillor Parker. It's also just should be noted that um, the design is just um, a recommendation right now. It's a visual to show you what we're looking to work on. So the exact color is uh, exact, whether it's an octopus or we wanted to tie in a pirate ship theme, but uh, the exact design and schematic hasn't been designed until we hire the artist. I think I'll just, I'm just going to ask one question because it's with regards to the paint um, is what about vandalism? So if, if there's vandalism on the building and vandalism is removed, will it remove the paint or will that barrier stay? Well, typically when they vandalize, they paint over top of it, whatever the material is. So you're going to be dealing with it regardless, whether it's metal or Lumicor, um, but your most efficient way of dealing with that is to paint over it again, right? So I would say um, if your artist is local, which most of the time they are, you know, you engage them to, to deal with that at that time, meaning you would right, either clean the surface of the metal or repaint the mural. Or if it's five years from now, you may reinstitute a different mural because that's the nice thing about a mural building. It can change um languages throughout its life right so thank you councillor rosehart thank you madam mayor to the speaker so um it says circulation pumps so does that have anything to do with the sand filters or i didn't see that like we don't see the tenders so i'm just wondering because they were just done they were, a few yeah, years ago so the filters no just the pumps they were looking to get a few more years life out of them which i believe that they will uh, they wanted to see if we could get this into this tender, which uh, they're still fully operational. The filters are fine, as I understand it. The sand filters, right? Sand filters, yes, the sand filters. The pumps themselves that run the water through the filters were looked to be updated at some point. And just to follow up on that, were they not updated when they redid the sand filters? That would be a no, I guess. <laughs> Through the mayor to Councillor Rosehart, uh, Karen Patnode had explained that it would be a good time to look at replacing the pumps. They were not done with the sand filters themselves, but the pumps need to be replaced in the near future. We did put it out as part of the tender to get costing to see if we could afford it within our budget. Came back obviously high, so it was something we removed. We think we have two to three more years at least to get out of those pumps. Any other questions for the architect? Well, thank you very much for the presentation. Looks thank like you. an exciting project. Thank you. So, um, Deputy Mayor, you have a resolution with regards to the presentation. I do. It's moved by myself, <clears throat> excuse me, seconded by Councillor Parsons. The council receives the presentation from A Plus Link. Architecture Incorporated regarding the schematic designs and floor plan of Lake Lisgore Water Park building as information. Are there any other questions from council to, to uh, stop? Seeing none, I just wanna say, I know that Julie's uh, poured her heart and soul into this project and um, it looks great. So just thank you to you and your team. So I'll call the vote, all those in favor? And that's unanimous and carried, none opposed. Now we are going to go to item 14.7.4.
And this is the award of contract for the renovation project we have just seen. Um, are there any questions regarding this report? Or, or first I'll ask you, do you have any summary comments? No, okay, questions, Deputy Mayor? Thank you, through you, Mayor, uh, I guess to the presenter, and I'm sorry, I should have asked this when you were in the podium. Uh, what assurances do we have or what time frame do we have that this is going to be built and, and completed? Yeah, take the podium, please, so you're recorded. Sorry, so our target date is uh, middle of June or, or around Father's Day, okay? But it will come down to the availability of materials. And so PK has been working with us on materials that we can get, and we'll keep that discussion going. So the next um, stage will be a formal award letter of intent to PK, and then they'll go out and get the shop drawings uh, requested, and we'll see what delivery dates uh, for some items might that might be issues. We have run into, um, and I'm just being real here, door delivery issues of 24 weeks, okay? But to say that, we've also worked around on, and used temporary uh, materials while we're waiting for those, um, the, the specified ones, um, because we know that during COVID, we're gonna run into supply issues on some materials. Um, but we're, we're, tr we're working hard to get the materials um, or spec materials that are available. We just don't know from day to day what is available. And uh, I'm sure just in your regular shop shopping trip, sometimes that's, that's the case. So, but we have a target date. We're gonna try hard to go for that target date. And if we don't have a target date, then we're just flailing in the wind, I think. But uh, that's the goal and PK is on board to help make that happen. Just a supplementary, Mayor. Uh, are we assured that it will be open? I mean, just because the doors aren't the right doors, do you think that uh, it can be open to uh, to the uh, the bathers by Father's Day? Well, I'm always I'm always, put, I'm always put in a position to guarantee. I never guarantee anything. I don't know, uh, but we will do whatever can be done to have it open for that date with temporary measures or otherwise. I just. I, I don't have the answers. Um, I just don't know if the materials are coming or they're available, right? So I, I can't assure you. Good question. Thank you. Any, Councilor Rosar? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I don't know whether to direct this to Julie. Um, so the furnishings we have now, are they going to be sold off or what are we doing with them? Because I see we're replacing the furnishings, right? Through you, Madam Mayor, to Councillor Rosehart. Uh, internal furnishings, anything that we could salvage, we did. It's already been placed in storage. Everything's pretty much been removed from the building at this time. If you're referring to items like outside, we aren't touching the outside to be replaced. That was going to be part of um, the, the items that were removed. They were quite expensive. Shade structure was one of them. Um, so we did have some dollars put in our capital budget for that to support the $80,000 I have to draw from for 2023 to help offset the coverage that we have proposed today. So we're putting that back in for 2024 and it'll be a council decision at that time for the budget for capital. Thank you. Thank you. Those do dollars were redirected to help fund this project. Any other questions, concerns? Seeing none, Deputy Mayor, you have a resolution. I do, it's moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Spencer, that the report, Recreation, Culture and Parks 23-08, Lake Lisger Water Park Renovation Award of Tender be received as information. And that the contract for RTF 2022-012 be awarded to PK Construction in the amount of $1,179,245 plus applicable HST of uh, $1,000,000 or I'm sorry, um, 1,200,000 net of non-refundable HST. And in addition to the project funding of 750,000 grant and 250,000 to venture funding, the project overage of 200,000 be covered by the 2023 capital levy through the following 2023 draft budget adjustments. Uh, number one, the project uh, uh, for deck and furnishings of uh, 
uh, X, I'm sorry, Project X34, Lake Lisgar Water Park Deck and Furnishings of 80,000, and Project X35, Natatorium of 20,000 be removed to the 2024 budget deliberations. And item number two, Project X14, Van Norman Heights subdivision streetlights be reduced by $100,000. Um, thank you. Are there any questions? So just to confirm, the dollar amounts for the deck furniture and the natatorium are staying in this budget to help fund this project, and then the projects are moving forward to 2024. Yeah. Okay, so good. Any other questions? Seeing none, we'll call the vote. And it's all in favor. So now we are headed back to, I think we have some special guests in the audience. I see a row of them with lots of smiles on their faces. Girl Guides of Canada. And we have leaders, Mary Beth and Amanda. Is there someone speaking on? All the girls. So we have Kylie, Tessa, Lauren, Avery, Charlotte, and Emily. Did I get you all? Emily's not here, but we have mechanics. Okay, welcome. So you can come up to them and as you speak, um, just speak into the microphone. And it's bendable too, if you wanna just like bend it down a little bit. <laughs> Don't be nervous. Um, hi, this is weird. <laughs> I'm Kylie, I'm 11 years old and I'm from the first Tilsonburg Guide Unit. We meet every Monday at 6.30 to 8.30 and we talk about safety and different things we need to learn in life. So we have a motto that we'd like to show you guys. Come and crowd around the microphone. <laughs> the reason for the microphone is there's people that are watching uh, okay. at home. So we want to make sure that they can hear you. Uh, ready? Yeah. I, I promise, promise to do my best to be true to myself, my beliefs in Canada. I will take action for a better world and respect the guiding law. And one more promise to share with you guys. Oh, what? Okay. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm an April on guiding, starting in 1909 by Agnes Bain Powell. Girls demanded to be part of the real life for Boy Scouts. Lord Bain Powell, who started Boy Scouts, asked his sister to create a program for girls. Both of their birthdays are on February 2nd. Girls and Boy Scouts all around the world celebrate the day on February 22nd. Hi, I'm Avery and I'm Lauren, and we're going to talk about the badges of guiding, the branches, and our community service project. Lauren and I both started guides when we were in Sparks, which is the first level of guides. We also did Embers, which is the second level of guiding. We are currently third year guides, and that's the third level. Pathfinders and Rangers are the two upper levels. And after you complete Pathfinders and Rangers, you can be a junior leader. And then after done junior leaders, you can be a leader. So now we're going to talk about some of the badges you can earn and how to earn them. Um, we've worked on a Money Sense badge. What we do for the Money Sense badge is we learn how to take care of money, how to use money, and how to take care of it safely. 
Um, we've also done the Caring for You badge, which is where we learned that we're, we, we are who we are and we're perfect. We are. <laughs> we're perfect for who we are. Um, our service project is we're currently going to make cat toys for the Perfect Companions Animal Rescue. And we're doing that for a service project. Um, we're also working on a Lady Baden Pal Award, which is where you earn all the uh, badges you can earn in guides and you get an award for that. Basically. I'm Charlotte, I'm 11 years old. I'm in, I'm a third year guide and I'm gonna talk about our camping. Um, so first we had our winter camp in the beginning of January, we learned um, about survival skills um, for like when you're camping. Um, we got to uh, meal prep and cook, help cook meals. Um, and we got, we solved two escape rooms because that was our theme. And we went on hikes. Um, it was very cold out, so we were freezing after. Um, then um, soon in May, we are going to have our solo camping um, for our Lady Baden Powell Award. Um, third year guides and the Pathfinder um, plan the camp. We get to um, choose where we get to camp. We have to pitch our own tent and we get to make our foods and plan what we're gonna eat on our own, like on a campfire. And we have to plan what we bring to survive the 24 hours. We will be camping near the rest of the group, but we'll be camping choices for 24 hours. Hi, um, I'm gonna tell you guys about our cookie selling. So we sell cookies twice a year, one in the mall, and we sell two different types of cookies, which are mint, chocolate, I think, and chocolate and vanilla. We sell them in the mall and various other places. We use the money that we earn to find different places where we go. So we use some of it to buy our supplies when we do crafts and stuff. Uh, we played with Bondar, which is the first Canadian woman in space. She was a part of our Girl Guide unit, so she took a box of cookies up to space and ate them. So that made us feel good. Um, first World Thinking Day on February 22nd, 2003, Girl Guide units from all around the world ask, asked that different landmarks to be lit up to blue to celebrate it. We all gathered around the clock for a few campfire songs to sing to celebrate about the people that created our group and how we are responsible for what goes on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, make sure you hit up all these counselors when you sell your cookies. Um, I was at Sparks last week and gave a little presentation and uh, I did get a box of chocolate. I think it was chocolate mint cookies. And it, I'm sad to say my husband ate the entire box and I never even got one. Um, <laughs> does council have any comments or questions? So just to clarify, you would like the lights at the clock tower turn blue on February 22nd, correct? Correct. Perfect. And we'll be gathering there um, to sing campfire songs at six o'clock. 630. 630. Okay. Any comment, Deputy Mayor? I'd like to make a comment. A short time ago, I was with a group of people who were elected. They were counselors, not just from Tulsaburg, but a large number of people. And I asked the question, how many people here started, leaders, how many started off in scouting? And way more than half put up their hands. So it's it's a good uh, it's a good route it's a good base.
to start as leaders in the community. And I'm sure you're all on that way. And I agree, those cookies are so good. They're so fresh. And I'm, if anybody brought any tonight, they'd probably buy a box. <laughs> we sold out. Ah. Yeah. We'll have more in the spring. Council Parker. Through you, uh, Mayor Gilvesi. Just to give your guys, yourselves a, a plug, one of your cookies actually going to be on sale so that people can come and see you at the mall. We don't have a delivery date yet for the spring cookies. Um, it's usually in March, though. Yeah. Thank you. If you wanted to let me know, we uh, do a roundtable announcements, and we could always announce something once you have a firm date. Councillor Spencer. I just wanted to say thanks to all of you and all the little uh, people here that gave the presentation. It takes a lot of courage to get up and talk in front of other people. Um, I was in Girl Guides and I've just been reminded how awesome it is by the information you young ladies shared. And so I'm gonna go home and see if my stepdaughter will sign up. Um, just one question uh, for the campfire uh, day at the clock tower, if that's a go, um, are you inviting other people to come and just sing with you or, or it's just something the Girl Guides are doing? Thanks. Um, anyone's welcome to join us because we will be in a very public place. So yes, it's open to anyone who wants to stop and see and join in a couple songs. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, let's see, I think it's Councillor Rosehart that has the resolution. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Moved by myself, second by Councillor Parker, that Council received a delegation from the Girl Guides of Canada, Ontario Council as information and turn and ask that to turn the lights on at the clock tower to be turned on blue on February the 22nd. Thank you folks for coming. And if anybody wants to join you, any public want to come out and join the girls, they'll be there at 6.30, ladies. 6.30. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other comments, council? Seeing none, we'll call the vote. All those in favor? And that's carried and unanimous. So I, I expect to see the clock tower will be blue on February 22nd. Have a great time. So now we've got some information items. We have a letter from Oxford County regarding the airport grant. Any questions, comments? Seeing none, Councillor Parker. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Parsons. The council receives the correspondence from Oxford County dated February 6, 2023 as information. Questions, comments? All those in favor? It's unanimous and carried with none opposed. Uh, next, we're going to a mayor's report regarding uh, Rural Ontario Municipal Association. So Kyle, the CAO, Deputy Mayor, and myself were in attendance. Um, went to, I think we had five delegations. We were pretty busy that day. Um, and I'll open the floor. Deputy Mayor, do you have any comments? No, the, um, uh, the only comments I, I would have to this is this is our opportunity to approach the, um, the ministers directly, uh, when, which we did, uh, to, to ask for the grants and the needs of, that uh, are here. And they're listed in the agenda as, as what happened. So this is a very powerful tool that this opportunity arises uh, at this event. So it's um, uh, it's uh, time well spent. Thank you, Kyle. Did you have anything to add? I, I think the mayor. So yeah, the delegations were well received by the ministers. Um, they're looking to move our items forward and give it consideration. So that was promising. Thank you. Any questions or comments from council? Seeing none, Councillor Spencer, you've got a resolution. Moved by myself and seconded by Deputy Mayor Bears that council receive report MYR 23-01 Rural Ontario Municipal Association Conference summary as information. Final call for questions or comments. Seeing none, all those in favor? And that is carried with none opposed.
So next we are moving over to um, a redesignation of a rezoning of property at 31 Earl Street and Cephas, do you have any comments in regards to this report? Oh, it's actually, it was actually the clerk's department. Sorry, I'm just looking. I just automatically went there. I, I, Kyle? You know, we're all happy to take it, but I'll start it off. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, in front of you, there is a recommendation that council authorize staff to prepare and submit all required planning applications to prepare the 31 Earl Street property for future affordable, attainable residential development. You'll recall in um, March of 2022, you guys passed a resolution here at council that that property be considered in the Oxford County Master Housing Plan. It was, they've uh, provided some analysis on that. And most recently, uh, the Economic Development Committee was able to review that as well and is recommending that this go forward. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Councilor Parker. Through you, Mayor Galvezzi. Uh, more so a comment. Uh, this has been discussed extensively at the Affordable and Attainable Housing uh, Committee as well. And um, it's something that uh, we think that is going to be a great benefit to the town, especially being on the list of projects for the Oxford County Master Housing Plan. So I think it's uh, a great opportunity for the town to move forward and start to uh, secure land for uh, affordable and attainable housing in town. Thank you. Anyone else? Well, yeah, I think this is an um, important step. Um, it is identified in that county master plan. The county did put extra money towards affordable and attainable housing this year. So getting a uh, shovel ready product projects is the key. So this is that step forward. Councilor Parson. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And that's, uh, that was my question. Uh, is there any crystal ball on, on the time shovels will be in the ground? When, when can we... Uh expect to start to move forward because there's a great need in this community so we have to go through this process first and then council will have to decide at some point like what a project would look like are you bringing in private um you know a private partner and then applications have to be made to the county so there is no really at this time we can't quantify um when it will be done i will say the county's goal the county has a goal of doing 52 affordable projects per year. That is not very many. So the goal is this year that there was extra money um, put into the pot to try and like, you know, hopefully exceed those numbers. But there's already some projects are already secured for this year as well. So first, we need to get this shovel ready, I, and I then go from there. I understand, Madam Mayor, and, and I appreciate that. Is there any foreseeable roadblocks to say we couldn't get this going this year sometime? stuff of any kind it does have to have a environmental so we don't know because of the wood lot am i correct so that me it's hard to say like I just, I just don't think we could say pending what happens from that report yeah i i just found the uh the the report from the county really eye-opening in terms of just how desperate it is, uh, not only in Tilsmark, but throughout Oxford County for people uh, to be able to afford even rental uh, opportunities. And I think we all knew that, but it's the, the report was very eye-opening and I sure hope we can get something going. We heard it loud and clear uh, recently during the campaign. So thank you. I, I'm on side for it. This, uh, this is that first big step. This is a big step forward. Kyle? Yeah, through the chair. So council has made this a priority in their strategic plan. Uh, staff hears that, we recognize that. Uh, we want to see this through and, and get the ball rolling. So let's make it shovel ready and we're going to listen to council in the community and we're going to try to make this go as quickly as possible with the right procedures in place. Thank you, Kyle. Any other comments? So uh, Councillor Luciani, you have a resolution. Yeah, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Spencer that Council authorize staff to prepare and submit all required planning applications to prepare the 31 Earl Street property for future affordable, attainable residential development. Any further questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? And that is carried with none opposed. Healthcare committee terms of reference, and I'll refer this over to the CAO. Do you have any comments in this regard? Great, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, just some summary comments. So as uh, council and the community may recall, we had a physician recruitment committee. Uh, this is a 
um, expansion, if you will, of that. It's the Community Health Care Committee. Uh, there's a terms of reference in front of you. So rather just focusing on physicians is going to focus on uh, primary care, so uh, different types of physicians as well. And uh, of course, that that's what's different with this uh, terms of reference. And you'll see that the community composition is a little bit different as well. So we can uh, advance on these priorities that are also outlined in the community strategic plan. Thank you. Questions or comments regarding the health care committees? So I would note that um, there is a recommendation now to have a nurse practitioner, um, a rep from nurse practitioners on there. So I think this is great because it just opens up the envelope to discuss the bigger picture. I see no other questions or comments. Uh, Councillor Rosart, you have a resolution. Thank you. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Deputy Bar Mayor Barris that Council adopts the proposed terms of reference for the Community Health Care Committee. Thank you. Further questions or comments? Deputy Mayor. Just make a little uh, quick comment on this. Just recently, the, um, uh, the federal government had made a commitment to the provinces to, to top up some funding for health care right across Canada. And the numbers are, are quite large. I believe it's $1.6 billion uh, is where they were starting. And then there's additional funding. Now, mind you, this is right across Canada. And they're looking for uh, results on how things will be, which will, which will mean there, there will be some changes in, uh, in primary health care, um, which would probably be a requirement of fewer family physicians but um, uh, certainly better health care for people. For example, some of the, um, the cosmetic things that people go to the doctor for today might necess not necessarily have to be uh, there for the doctor, but the primary care clinic area could handle it uh, uh, without um, uh, overloading the, the physicians with, uh, with a high patient load. So I believe it's going to be rewritten through... Uh, the provincial health ministry as to what uh, what the terms are. In the meantime, we'll sit back and watch. And, and I think it, the key thing of what I feel is Tilsonburg will support our local hospital to the best of our ability to provide health care for the people of the town of Tilsonburg. That's our that's our job here. Thank you. And I I urge people as well to take a look because um, pharmacists have been powered up to be able to administer medication so you can look the, the, all that information up online so okay so Councilor Rosehart did you read it already I thought so <laughs> I'm going to call the question all those in favor and that is carried with none opposed so we are skipping item 4.4 and we are coming back to that later so we are going to item 4.6 operations and development assumption by law for Andrews Crossing and uh, I guess I'll turn that over to Jonathan um, through you, Madam Mayor, uh, I think this report is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the assumption bylaw will put uh, Andrews Crossing into our portfolio as it relates to asset management um, and that the general tasks related to inspection and quality control have been completed to date. Uh, I'll open the question or the floor for any questions or comments. Council have any questions, concerns? Seeing none, Councillor Spencer, you have the resolution. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Luciani that Council receive report OPD 2309, Assumption Bylaw for Andrews Crossing, <clears throat> excuse me, subdivision phase two, and that a bylaw to assume all public services right of way within the registered plan for 1M-349, more particularly described in the uh, May 21st, uh, 2019 subdivision agreement between the Corporation of the Town of Tilsonburg and Performance Communities Realty Incorporated be brought forward to Council's consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Any further comments or questions? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Um, carried with none opposed. So now we're moving to item 14.6.2, the Waste Management Program. Um, I do see that uh, David Simpson, Director of Public Works from the County and Frank Ghost, Manager, Transportation and Waste Management is online. If Council should have questions, I'm going to turn it over to Jonathan. Thank you. 
Thank you. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, uh, this report is for consideration as it relates to the transfer station and some changes as relative to operational authority. Um, of special note and consideration that was highlighted through the report, uh, the funds allocated in terms of uh, or in terms of the proposed changes from the Oxford County have gone through as effective of February um, in February of this year, and I'll open the floor for any questions or comments. Could you um, maybe highlight like what changes there would be Certainly. for citizens? So yeah. I think that would be helpful, thanks. So the, the biggest changes are obviously related to the operating authority uh, and the budget incurred of that. We would still own the transfer station lands and be subject to the ECA. Um, the county is proposing that uh, there would be a fee structure similar to what they have at Woodstock uh, and the fees and charges bylaw appendices to that effect are included in the attachments. Uh, there will be tipping fees associated with construction material and general waste. However, yard waste will be still accepted uh, free of charge on the west side of the transfer station uh, to complement the regional boundary expansion that would now include the entire Oxford County population. Um, the county is proposing Proposing a once annual every year large item pickup from curbside. Um, yard waste as it relates to our LEAF program would still be under our care and control as it is currently. Uh, and that will be coming forward for council's consideration 2024 when we're going to change that program. Um, part of some of the uh, local consideration was council's direction in terms of Sunday operations. Uh, so we're looking at doing the ECA revisions. It is required for the boundary change and the hours of operations as it relates to Sunday. So just to streamline our application, we're going to do those at the same time. Uh, the county is willing to take on that extra service. Uh, there are some otherwise local improvements that are subject to a grant of last year that we still need to uh, implement the lighting and some security features. So those will also be installed uh, under the public works manager locally. Uh, but otherwise, this will free up some staff complement as it relates to our local complement and transfer that over to the county's authority. Um, I, there's a little bit of more moving parts in this, but I hope broadly I've captured enough for council's consideration, but certainly welcome any questions. Thank you. Councillor Parker. Through you, uh, Mayor Gilvesi, to, uh, I guess, Jonathan. The tipping fees that you mentioned, um, currently we started charging for the construction materials on the tipping fees back a few months ago. Is that going to um, be for our all large article, item, their item, <laughs> items, or is that going to be still staying the same as just for the construction material? through the mayor to councillor parker that would be inclusive of everything identified within the fee schedule so similar footprint as woodstock and the landfill one discernible uh, difference is that we don't have scales out there so it is a little bit of caution to the operator in terms of what how large that tipping fee would be but to answer your question specifically it would be all encompassing except for yard waste would still be free Councillor Parsons. So looking at the fee schedule, for example, and, and this is going to start soon, I, I assume, but a pickup truck load is $16 now to go out there where, I mean, currently they pay nothing. So citizens in Tilsonburg, but it's beyond Tilsonburg, I realize, who may want to take a, a truck or a trailer, a pickup truck and a trailer is $45. And this is something that's new. How soon is this going to st uh, start? I'm sorry. Thank you. Through the mayor to uh, the councillor. Uh, so the bylaw affecting the fees and, or fees and charges for the county was implemented in Jan 1. So we're lagging behind a little bit in terms of these implemented charges, but we are going to also do some public notification and awareness training as it relates to these charges. But to answer your question pointedly, yes, the charges would incur the date that the county would take official uh, ownership of or the operations of the transfer station. Um, certainly, and that's in compromise to the annual once a year pickup curbside for large items, which would be free of charge. So that's where the, the complement on the other side of the scales would be. Councilor Parker. 
to you, Mayor Gilvesi, to uh, Jonathan. Um, the educational component for the residents of Tilsonburg, will that be coming from the town or will that be coming from the county? Um, the intention, sorry, through the mayor to the Councillor Parker, the intention is that it would be probably joint, um, but the, the town would take a lead on it because it is changes directly affecting the town's residents. Um, the form and function of what that notice will look like, we haven't determined yet, uh, subject to some of the timelines and moving parts as it relates to the ECA, but certainly we'd make every best effort that we can, social media, newspaper, um, willing for, or I open the floor for any, uh, you know, other uh, direction that council may have, whether that is a mail out, but we will certainly be doing as much as possible to inform the general public. Councilor Rosar. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Through you to the director, is that a savings for the town of Tilsonburg now? Through the mayor to uh, Council Rosehart, in a way, yes, um, because it is being, it is now encompassing the general levy of all the county residents that will now be funding our operations of the transfer station. But as part of the financial uh, analysis that we provided in this report, there is an operational savings that will be uh, this year in the, the tune of about $100,000 that we're actually requesting to go towards the transportation master plan. Uh, so that's the, the other um, component financially. However, we're asking for just that to be considered today because there still are some moving parts as it relates to the environmental compliance approval form that we need to satisfy in terms of the ministry. But there will be a savings in this year. Thank you. Any other questions? I had one quick question. It was regards to the cost of the pickup. Um, I thought that I had read um, that it was between nine and 10,000, just trying to think back to the county budget. Um, and in here it says 54,500 for the one day pickup, but I, I, I don't think this is right, but maybe, um, maybe even David or Frank could answer. Uh, through to the mayor, um, I certainly would ask for them to contribute, but I, I did provide this report to county staff to try to clarify some of their moving parts um, as it would go together. Uh, David or Frank, would you be able to speak to the cost for the once annual pickup at the curbside? Uh, Mayor, I'm not sure Thank you, Mayor Gelvezi. In response to Jonathan's comment there, our understanding for the cost of the large article curbside collection proposed to be carried out in 2023 in the town of Tisselberg would be approximately $54,500. Thank you very much, David. Uh, Councillor Parker. Through you, uh, Mayor Gilvesi, this will be my last question. Um, I, the question that I have is currently we have uh, cardboard recycling and styrofoam recycling at the transfer station on the um, non yard waste side. Um, is that going to be included in the uh, fees because I don't see anything like that in there. So will that be included in the minimum tipping fee um, for uh, a vehicle. So to the mayor, to Councillor Parker, um, I would ask again, David or uh, Frank, to clarify because I think that would be the most relative. But my understanding was that the fee would be leveraged onto that, um, which it otherwise has not been in the case. Oh, sorry, my apologies. I'm getting a no, so <laughs> I misspoke. That will still be free. Uh, recyclables will still be free of charge. Or I'm good. good with that. So recyclables, there's still no charge for recyclables. Any other questions, concerns? Councillor Parker, it's a long one. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Parsons. That report OPD 23-10 waste management program updates, including transfer station operating authority be received as information. And the council directs staff to revise the current environmental compliance approval form subject to the town's transformation to include Sunday operating hours, yard waste only, and a request for a boundary expansion inclusive of residents of Oxford County be prepared and submitted to the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks for approval. 
and the council directs staff to proceed with the required public consultation notice period as per the revised ECA application. And the council directs staff to execute a revised waste management agreement with the County of Oxford Waste Management Authority to reflect the town staff's requested operational changes, which were approved by Oxford County Council as part of their 2023 business plan and budget, which included and which included and that council directs staff to provide the appropriate notice to the residents of the town of Tilsonburg with respect to the changes to the 2023 waste management program. Council have any further comments or questions? Seeing none, we'll call the vote. All those in favor and opposed? There is one opposed. Thank you. Now we move on to recreation, culture, and parks with a series of reports. And the uh, first one up would be the uh, Tilsburg Business Improvement Area Memorandum of Understanding. And uh, Director Columbus, do you have anything to add? Thank you, Madam Mayor and Members of Council. The report before you is really a housekeeping item. It's asking for Council's approval for the 2023 to 2025 BIM. BIA MOU, including the town's financial contribution as outlined in this report. Thank you. Thank you. Um, does council have any questions? With regards to the report and the memorandum of understanding, Councilor Parker. Uh, yeah, thanks, Mayor Gilvezi. Uh, there's a $1,500 fee in there in the MOUD. Um, just give me a second and I'll pull it up. Um, I'm just wondering if that was accounted for in our uh, 20 in our budget for this year. Through you, Mayor, just Councillor Parker, could you just clarify where you're pointing? Sorry. Are you referring to the Appendix B with the breakdown of the different costs? That would be in regards to the street signage. Um, the responsibility of the BIA with the town providing $1,500 per annum for replacement and or new street signage. And just to clarify your question, you were asking if this was included in 2022s or in our 2023 budget? Yes, correct. The overall sum of the money that we're asking for financial contribution includes that fee. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions regarding the MOU on this report? I do have a question on page 258. So it said that capital projects of a minor nature, um, like I'm not sure what the definition of minor nature is, but um, furthermore, that the BIA could fund under a separate levy. Is this proposing that the BIA could initiate a levy on top of the levy? Like this is like a special levy for like a fundraising levy. Did anyone clarify this? I can answer that, Madam Mayor. Uh, for the BIA to uh, issue another levy, that would have to come through council's uh, approval, just like council approved the initial levy amount. So. Um, my understanding is that, uh, no, that is basically this MOU, all dollars related to the execution of the uh, items required under the uh, MOU are funded by the amount set within the, the dollar, the overall total. Okay. Um, does anyone know, was this clause always there? Like, like honestly, I just, I just don't remember. Um, it's fine. But, but basically, there's restrictions. The BIA can't implement another levy unless this council approves, correct? Does anyone else have any questions or concerns? Seeing none, Councillor Parker. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Rosehart. The report RCP 23-04, Business Improvement Area. <laughs> 2023 memorandum of understanding be received as information and that council 
per approve the proposed 2023 BIA Memorandum of Understanding as outlined within this report and that the Tilsonburg Business Improvement Area Memorandum of Understanding and Direction Rate be increased by 15% in 2023 and be capped at the town's uh, consumer price index of 5.7 for the years of 2024 and 2025 as per Council Resolution 2023-025 and that the mayor and director of corporate services or clerk be authorized to sign the 2023 business improvement area memorandum of understanding agreement attached here to as appendix a any follow-up questions or concerns seeing none i'll call the vote all those in favor and that is carried with an unopposed. Next, we move to the Station Arts Memorandum of Understanding. Again, we turn back to Julie. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, members of Council, again, this is an MOU speaking to the Station Arts, um, including financial contributions for the years 2022 to 2024. And the reason why um, 2022 is just a housekeeping item, um, apparently it was approved and resolution is noted in the report 2021-565. Um, However, the agreement was never signed by staff. So bringing that forward tonight to clean that up and to bring forward the financial contributions for clarity. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions in regards to the Station Arts MOU? Seeing none, Councillor Spencer. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Rosehart, that report RCP 23-05 Station Arts Centre 2022-2024 Memorandum of Understanding be received as information and that council approve the proposed memorandum of understanding attached to this report and that the town calculated consumer price index be used uh, for the grant contribution in 2023 and 2024 and that the mayor and director of corporate services or slash clerk be authorized to sign the Station Arts Center 2022 to 2024 Memorandum of Understanding Agreement attached here to as Appendix A. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Uh, that's carried with none opposed. Now we move to weekend security for the outdoor rink and once again go back to Director Columbus. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of Council. So this report before you is speaking to some assistance at our outdoor rink. Um, council was made aware that earlier in our season when the outdoor rink was open that we were struggling with some vandalism and graffiti and um, unruly behavior out at that facility. Uh, over the Christmas break, we were able to get a security guard to help us with Friday, Saturday and Sunday evenings to have a presence between five o'clock and nine o'clock in the evenings. Um, the success you can see in the report from staff's comments uh, it was very well supported. We did see a decrease in the behavior and complaints. Um, I'm asking to bring that forward again for the next four weeks from February 17th to March 19th at a cost of $2,500. Thank you. Any questions, Councillor Parker? Not really a question, more of a comment. Um, Julie, thanks for bringing this forward. It's very unfortunate that we're to the point that we need security for an outdoor open open space use uh, park. It's very disappointing to see the vandalism out there and the people people being harassed and not following the rules. They're very simple rules to follow and it's, uh, it's really disappointing to see that we have to use taxpayers' money to fund, uh, to secure this outdoor rink. I would echo those comments, Councillor Parker. Uh, Councillor Rosehart. Thank you, Madam Mayor. To you, to the director. Is the rink going to be open? Is it going to be ice on from now till March because the weather is so nice? Are we still going to be using that? Oh, sorry. Thank you. Through you, Madam Mayor, to Councillor Rosehart. That's a great question. Uh, we actually just closed the facility today because tomorrow I think they're calling for 14 degrees. Uh, so our facilities chief operator did close the facility. Um, this is in anticipation that we do have ice. Hopefully we do and people can use it. If not, obviously we would cancel security if it was closed. So it's a maximum of $2,500. I'll follow up, Madam Mayor, to you to the director. So would it be feasible maybe for us to just say that we're closing it as of the rest of the year? 
sorry, three mile meter uh, for clarity to Councillor Rosehart, just closing tomorrow, meaning it was 14 degrees tomorrow and it was getting soft. So for safety reasons, we close due to weather. We do that when it rains as well. So it could be open the next, on the weekend, depending on whether it's, per, it's permitting, weather permitting, whether or not we can operate that facility for safety reasons. Any other questions? Seeing none, Councillor Luciani. Move by myself and seconded by Deputy Mayor Barris that the Council receives report RCP 23-06 weekend security for outdoor rink as information and that the addition of a weekend security guard to patrol the outdoor rink between 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. on Friday to, sun to Sunday from February 17th to March 19th be approved and further that the additional $2,500 of approximate expense be covered under the 2023 RCP building maintenance subcontract expense GL operating budget. Last call for final comments. Seeing none, I will call the vote. All those in favor? Carried with none opposed. So we already did 14.7.4. So we are moving to 14.7.5, the ACTI Pass program. And I believe we are right back to uh, Director Columbus. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Sorry. I was just Miss my notes here. Um, this is a project that was brought forward in 2020 to council and approved at that time. So COVID actually um, put a halt or pause that program. It's through public Southwestern Public Health. Um, Andrea has uh, brought that forward again in her report, just asking again for support to offer uh, free public skating, free public swimming, um, and as well in the outdoor swimming park, sorry, swimming pool uh, that we allow grade fives um, in conjunction with the entire county. Um, Cities of St. Thomas and London are participating in the program as well uh, to have access to this uh, recreational, um, these recreational activities, including a 25% discount and any rec programs we offer here in town. It's the same details that were brought forward in Andrea's previous report. Uh, they've just recommenced the program. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Director Columbus? Seeing none, Councillor Spencer, you have a resolution. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Rosehart. The Council received report RCP 2309 Act um, I pass program and that the town of Tilsburg supports the partnership with Southwestern Public Health in order to provide the Act Pass program to grade five students beginning in June 2023. Final opportunity for comments or questions? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? And that is carried with none opposed. So next we move to full-time parks operator. Again, back to Director Columbus. I feel like it's the Columbus show tonight. <laughs> Sorry, there's lots going on. Um, so this really is a housekeeping item. It's speaking to a position that was included in our 2018 um, operating budget. It's a position that we share parks um, jointly with our public works department. Um, it's been, operating as a full-time position since 2018. However, we did notice this year when the uh, candidate who is in that position was actually promoted to a full-time parks position um, that this position became vacant. And when we looked at HR and CAO and posting this position, uh, the paperwork didn't show it coming to council for approval. And as you're aware, it is a full-time position and requires your blessings and your approvals. So this is a housekeeping item just to bring this position forward to apologize that it was missed a few years ago and to ask for your approval this year. The amount was included in our operating budget for 2023. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from council? Seeing none, Councillor Parker. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Luciani, that council receives the information outlined in report RCP 23-12, full-time parks operator and light equipment operator, and that council approve the position, which is included in the 2023 operating budget as a house cleaning item. Any comments, questions, seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor, um, that would be carried with none opposed. So now we move on to fire hall mold remediation and back to Councillor Columbus, or De De Director Columbus. You almost said Deputy Mayor. Um, thank you, Mayor and members of Council. This report is a joint report with myself and Chief Cascanet, who is here this evening. Um, we can speak to it if you have questions. It's with regards to um, an air quality test that was requested from the fire department. 
facilities conducted that. We did receive the results in late December. Um, unfortunately, this amount wasn't included in our 2023 budget. So we're bringing it forward to show you that we did get quotes to address the mold that was detected and the cleanup process for that mold. It's gone to our Joint Health and Safety Committee. Um, the, the fire department would like to see this actioned. And the results came in at about $12,750 plus HST. Uh, we're suggesting in consultation with our finance director that it be placed under our fire hall building repairs and maintenance operating budget. Um, and that we can absorb hopefully that overage that we have, because currently there's only $9,000 in that budget line. So any overage would be absorbed uh, through surplus. Thank you. Any questions from council? Nope, seeing none, Councillor Parsons. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Moved by myself, second by Councillor Luciani. That council receives the information outlined in report RCP 23-13, fire hall mold remediation and that council approved Ontario Mold Specialist to complete the mold remediation at a cost of $12,750 plus HST, and that the expense be charged against the 2023 Fire Hall Building Repairs and Maintenance Operation Budget. Thank you. Any questions from council? I have one question. So, I mean, obviously this is very important to do for safety of employees. Um, so obviously there was water getting in that creates mold now. So like by eradicating the mold, will water still be getting in? Like, or, or are we actually like, are we rectifying the whole problem here? Through you, Mayor, uh, to Council, uh, excellent question. So as you know, we're dealing with that in other areas as well. Um, so in consultation with our facility supervisor, she has confirmed the maintenance that the annual maintenance that was happening on um, such as air conditioners, um, air conditioning units, uh, some have been removed and replaced, some are there and being maintenance differently, dehumidifier is being installed. So they are taking um, steps towards reducing the moisture within the lower levels of the building. And as well, some windows are being replaced because they were old, obviously, um, seals were giving way uh, and we're constantly obviously investing in that capital asset. Thank you. Thank you very much. So any further questions? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? And that's unanimous with none opposed. Now we are going back to, we're doing lots of flipping back and forth today. We are going back to item 14.4.1, which is the draft budget summary. I will turn it over to the director of finance um, for any summary comments you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor, uh, through you uh, to Council. Uh, Council, this is the, the final report uh, in regards to the budget uh, since the December 7th uh, meeting of Council. Um, as Council is aware, Bill 23 had some impacts uh, to municipalities. Most notably, um, there'll be some exclusions uh, once Council adopts the new DC bylaw in 2024. Therefore, we want to take the opportunity to review the 2023 draft budget to look at uh, uh, specifically uh, studies and master uh, plans to look at what could be incorporated uh, into this budget. So that uh, this resolution takes into account um, um, some of those uh, studies. And on page 216 of the PDF uh, is a summary of all the other additional changes uh, that this resolution encompasses. Uh, some of the items have already been addressed uh, in tonight's meeting uh, with regards to changes to the capital projects, uh, which are funding uh, different projects that have been brought forth to council. Therefore, the capital levy has a net impact of zero. On the operating side, um, there are uh, some items that are have come forth uh, again since the last budget meeting. Uh, with regards to insurance renewal, airport taxes, uh, extension of um, intake three project, uh, some additional audit fees, uh, some changes, some changes re regarding the MOU decrease, uh, and also the opportunity as well to have reviewed some of the additional uh, changes within the supplemental taxes. All of which net out to a change in the operating levy of an increase of uh, just, uh, just about ten thousand dollars. Um, on the um, on the DC changes, um, 
just to comment that it is also important that these studies also be concluded or be started in 2023 as they will inform uh, all the future needs of the town and will actually be incorporated uh, uh, and form the basis for the 2024 study. Um, the, the DCs uh, normally has, um, as the town has been collecting the DCs and hold those in reserves, um, one thing to note is that um, the upcoming changes to the DC legislation is that uh, going moving forward in 2024 beyond, 60% of the uh, funds within the reserve are to be allocated. Um, and what that translates um, is that the dollars that we have in DC reserves, which is just over $5 million, $5.4 million, uh, are actually not monies that we're uh, just collecting uh, for some future project. The last study had a 20 year time horizon. And so it encompassed uh, the, all the future um, projects that the town had envisioned at, at that time and calculated what the rates would be so that there's enough money in that reserve when those projects uh, come due uh, for implementation. So the majority of those funds, if not all, would be allocated to those future projects. So I think that's just a distinction to make uh, in terms of just the narrative in the province and some of the changes required that uh, the town is not just sitting on this funds uh, and collecting the dollars that they are earmarked for future projects. And those projects will be updated um, in terms of the, the next uh, 20 years uh, costing uh, for the time horizon. Um, so overall, the uh, resolution um, calls for uh, the adoption of the uh, the budget, 28.4 million operating and 7.2 million capital budget for a total of 35.6 million uh, total uh, budget with 19.1 million coming from taxation. The resolution also uh, seeks council support in the goal of financial sustainability within the strategic plan uh, by asking council to uh, have a dedicated capital levy of 3% uh, of the overall levy within uh, 2024, 3% in 25, and 1% in 26. And that one of the items within this trap plan is the financial sustainability plan itself, a document that would contain a number of policies, uh, one of which we're asking council to direct staff to incorporate a 1% dedicated capital levy increase starting in 2027 onwards as part of that financial sustainability plan. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll answer any questions. Thank you very much. Questions from Council regarding the 2023 business plan and budget? None? Councillor Parsons? Uh, just um, really, I, I found the budget process to be a very, very well done, very comprehensive, and, uh, and kudos to, to you, Director, uh, for guiding Council through this. I'm particularly impressed with uh, the tenure asset management program, the, the capital that uh, going forward, trying to remove the uh, the mountains and the valleys and smooth things out a bit. And I, I believe this is a great path forward. And I, I'm very supportive of this budget. Thank you. Um, anyone else have any comments? I certainly echo that sentiment. It was a smooth budget process. The binder was fantastic. It was easy to read and navigate, um, which, People may not understand, but when you're, you've got hundreds of pages to read in front of you all the time, it's really refreshing to have something so very organized and, and easy to go through. So thank you to you and all your staff. So uh, Deputy, any other questions or concerns? Seeing none, Deputy Mayor Bears, you have the resolution. I'll read the resolution. Uh, it's moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Luciani that the report for finance 23-05-2023 draft budget summary and recommendations report be received as information and that the 2023 operating budget of $28,399,968 with a levy of $16,639, uh, I'm sorry, let me repeat that, $16,639,583 and the 2023 capital budget of $7,197,700 with a levy of $2,508,000 uh, be a combined budget amount of $35,597,668 
with 19,147,583 uh, from taxation be adopted. And that a future bylaw be brought forward setting the 2023 property tax rates and that to further support the goal of financial sustainability in the 2021 to 2030 community strategic plan, a dedicated capital levy increase of 3% of the overall levy in 2024, 3% in 2025, and 1% in 2026 be approved. And that staff be directed to incorporate a 1% dedicated capital levy increase for every year starting in 2027 into a financial sustainability plan for council approval. Thank you to Deputy Mayor Barris. Um, and does anyone have any questions? Councillor Parsons. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, not, not a question, as much as a comment. Uh, the, the impact of this budget in the community, um, you know, 2.82%, uh, uh, a rate increase of $53.79 annually on the median residential property in the community, I find to be, um, I mean, as much as uh, we all would like to have the lowest possible taxes, and we know that people are looking for that leadership and that help now. But I mean, I think it's I think it's a fair uh, tax increase, uh, and I've compared our tax increase to many municipalities uh, in Ontario, uh, even as late as today. And and I think uh, I think it's good. My question I will have then, Madam Mayor, will there be an opportunity? And I know the community has has had the opportunity to view the budget process because these were open public meetings, but will there be a, an opportunity to somehow uh, publicize the highs and lows or the, uh, the touch points uh, for, them, for them to see? I don't know whether we'll put something in the paper on our website. It will, do you have a plan to uh, highlight any of this? Thank you. Yes, and I will actually turn it over to Renato to answer that question. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, it is uh, my understanding the annual practice that has been and will look to uh, sending out a, a news release uh, in, as well as a newspaper notice and ad uh, in addition to having a summary of the final budget that will be posted on the town's website. So those will occur uh, as soon as we are able to, to do so within the next week. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other questions? I would have one final question. Um, would the um, expanded tax bill, like the more detailed tax bill, <laughs> he's laughing. This has been a, this has been a long time in the works. Um, we might be able to expect to see that in August, maybe the final tax billing. Yes, Madam Mayor, um, our new uh, uh, revenue manager has been working with um, our IT support to ensure that that will get underway and uh, it will demonstrate. Uh, the based on each tax bill, the total amount broken out uh, by percentage of the service area, same to, as the financial information return categories that we post uh, to the ministry. Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to that. So, and if there's no other questions or comments, I will call the vote. All those in favor? And that's unanimous and carried. And now we are moving over to, sorry, we have to flip pages here again. Um, committee minutes. Am I on track? I'm just checking with my clerk. Well, yep. Yep. Good. So committee minutes. Uh, any questions? It is page 12 of your agenda and it's 16.1. Yeah, 12 of the script. Sorry. Page 12 of the script. And uh, Councillor Luciani, you have a resolution. Yeah, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Spencer that Council receives the Economic Development Advisory Committee minutes dated uh, January 17th, 2023, the Affordable and Attainable Housing Advisory Committee, Committee minutes dated January 25th, 2023, and the Physician Recruitment Committee minutes dated September 20th, 20th 2022 as information. Thank you. Any questions, comments, seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor, and that is carried with none opposed. Long Point Region Conservation Authority, Deputy Mayor Barris, do you have anything to add to the minutes? Um, Nothing to add, everything's there. It was basically uh, setting up for the year with election of, of chair, vice chair and committees. Any questions, comments, saying none, and the resolution's yours. Um, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Parsons that the county, I'm sorry, the council received 
the Long Point Region Conservation Authority Board of Director minutes dated January 11, 2023 as information. Thank you. Questions, comments, seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor, and that would be carried with none opposed. I was just waiting for that last hand to go up over there. <laughs> it looks like you were very enthralled in what you're reading. Now we move on to notice of motions. Uh, Councillor Rosehart. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Parker that the Council Renumeration Bylaw and Council Expenses Policy be reviewed to consider the inclusion of individual council budgets and that staff be directed to explore best practice in other municipalities and that the staff be directed to report back with proposed amendments to the Council Renumeration Bylaw and that Council's Expenses Policy, which includes individual council's budget. Uh, can I speak on that, Madam Mayor? Um, I just think that we haven't reviewed this in a long time and there's only so much money in the councillor's budget and just to see and get a report back on what other municipalities are doing. Thank you. Questions or comments? So council um, has a budget of 13,000, I believe. Um, conferences, are getting more expensive. Like there's some conferences, I think AMO, it's like over, it's almost $900 just for the fee to go. So I just, I don't know, I will support this because I just think that we just need to be aware and just to make sure that we stay within budget. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? If not, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? I see that was unanimous with none opposed. Councillor Spencer. Um, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Parker, uh, that staff be directed to amend the terms of reference for the Youth Engagement and Strategy Advisory Committee, and that the amended terms of reference include the following committee name to be changed to Tilsonburg Youth Advisory Council, to advise and make recommendations to council on all matters with respect to youth civic engagement, youth recreational and social issues in the town of Tilsonburg. Members can be anywhere from ages 15 to 19, two members of the community aged 20 plus and or above. The committee shall have a maximum of 13 members in total and that the term of commitment be one school year term. The committee meeting once per month with the exception of July and August that community service volunteers hours be signed off for all youth members and that the town of Tilsonburg registers the youth council with the Youth Coalition Council of Canada for a one year trial period using funds from council's 20 23 committee board projects budget. May I speak to that? Um, I had the opportunity to, um, through business, to speak to a woman named uh, Julie Cogne, uh, project coordinator for um, community building youth future um, futures. And Jody said she had heard about this committee and that she'd be willing to come and be available to share, to speak to council, speak to this committee, uh, or even help to recruit. She's part of a local project here in Oxford County um, with a team of youth that by their government standards uh, is 15 to 29 years of age. And they're involved with 14 Oxford County committee uh, or organize, community organizations and partners, including Oxford County Council, uh, Thames Valley, London District School Board, CAS, our, our own uh, multi-service center, Fanshawe College, Welkin, it goes on and on. Um, and their goal is to um, uh, focus on improving high, high school graduation. The reason I'm sharing this, um, because the youth outcomes across Oxford County uh, through several reports um, have shown that we're well below the um, standard uh, in the province for um, successful completion uh, graduation and that our own high school is second lowest in the county. Um, and so she had stated that she was so happy about to this count, uh, youth council um, because it's also statistically been shown that people that get involved, youth that get involved with these committees statistically have a higher completion rate. So I just wanted to share that information because I thought it was important. And uh, yeah, thanks. Thank you very much. Do, uh, does anyone have any questions? Councillor Parker? 
Um, yeah, so this was a, a committee that was, uh, or this was brought up last year in the 2022 budget, um, and that um, there was funds set aside for it in the 2022 budget. However, the committee never actually got off of um, off the ground um, because of staffing changes and, and whatnot. So this is an opportunity for us to um, engage the youth in the community and um, really get to the point of finding out what the youth in the community community want to see so i think that uh, this is a very beneficial opportunity and uh, i thank uh, councillor spencer for uh, working with me and getting the uh, terms of reference uh, changes uh, together so that it can both be amicable for each of us and uh, it'll be uh, i think this committee will have uh, a great impact uh, in the future thank you very much any other comments or questions Seeing none. Oh, Councillor Luciani. Just one uh, quick, uh, quick question. I guess through you to Councillor Spencer. Just the uh, the term of commitment to be one school year term. Does that include everybody on the committee or just the participant? I'm just not. I don't want to get in the weeds here in the logistics and how you're going to deal with this. But uh, I was just just out of curiosity on that. Thanks. Um, it's more pertaining to the youth, but I guess that should be clarified. It's more to the fact that a grade 10 student can't commit to anything, let alone four years of something. Um, but certainly the staff, the council, uh, or not the staff, but the two of 20 and up, um, I believe there's an OPP liaison as well, that that can certainly be for the four years. I guess that should be clarified, eh, Tanya? Yeah, I don't know. I would suggest an amendment of that to um, that the term of commitment for student volunteers be a one year school year term. Great catch. Great question, Councillor Luciani, and thank you. So it's been amended. So it's just the school commitment being one year. Everything else is a typical council term, correct? Are we all satisfied? Uh, through the chair. So I understand that uh, Councillor Spencer and Councillor Parker worked on the resolution. So thank you very much. I think staff suggested the number 13. Is that correct? I think that's based on the, the recent issue of concern where uh, we went out to, to market, if you will, for committee members. There was an error. So we had to expand the, um, the amount of committee members. Typically it is nine though. You guys might find that easier to work with. I'm not sure. I'm just throwing that out there for you guys. Through the mayor, um, that recommendation came from the Youth Coalition Council to not put the numbers low because she said you'll find that some of the students, the youth drop off. They won't stay for their commitment. Um, so having a larger group might be more beneficial. She actually suggested no cap um, and Councillor Parker and I suggested it be in with the others. Thanks. Through the chair, we might want to consider then what quorum is for the meeting then if we don't if you think there might be concerned with the majority showing up to meetings or why not any other comments or concerns seeing none i will call the vote all those in favor that would be carried with none opposed uh next Next, we have a notice of motion that was submitted by Councillor Parker after the agenda publication to debate the motion at tonight's meeting. Council would need to waive the notice requirements in the procedural bylaw with two thirds majority. And I will turn the floor over to Councillor Parker. I move by myself and seconded by Councillor Rosehart that the notice requirements contained in section 6.10 of the procedural bylaw. 4173 be waived in order to introduce the following motion for debate that the no parking signs in front of 28 and 26 Francis Street be removed and that the 30 minute parking signs on the northeast side of Francis Street be removed and that a bylaw to amend the traffic bylaw be brought forward. I'd like to uh, speak to that. Um, so there's been a number of complaints from uh, parents uh, dropping kids off over in that area. Oh, so uh, okay. We're just clarifying. So first, you just you can only speak to the reason why we need to hear it tonight, correct? And then it'll be on the floor. 
So uh, the reason that we're asking for this is I believe that there is an issue with what we passed in the uh, last uh, council meeting. Um, it's causing a lot of issues over in the school area. So I will discuss it afterwards if we are allowed to. So, okay, just getting clarification from the clerk. So the first thing we're gonna be voting on is just to waive the rules to be able to debate this issue only with regards to why it's coming on the floor. So, are, under, okay. So I'm gonna call the vote. So this is the vote to allow to hear this motion this evening. Okay, all those in favor? So I see unanimous with no one opposed. So now <clears throat> um, I turn it back mm -hmm. over to now, Councillor Parker can yep. speak to the actual motion, correct? Moved by, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Rosehart that the no parking signs in front of 28 and 26 Francis Street be removed and the 30 minute parking signs on the northeast side of Francis Street be removed and that the bylaw to amend the traffic bylaw be brought forward. Um, can I speak to that? Um, so since we made changes in the uh, last council meeting, the signs have been put up. Um, there's been a number of complaints from residents in the air of residents dropping kids off at school. It's created a lot of traffic congestion in the area and has actually become a safety issue over over there um, because there's no there there's no place for people to park on the street and at this time the parking lot for the school itself is not um, the proper size which we um, did request that the mayor sends a letter to uh, the London District's Catholic School Board um, to address that size but in the meantime we have a number of issues with uh, with the parking that's there. Um, and until the parking lot can be increased in size, I think that this is the opportunity to um, at least remove it temporarily until uh, until we can address the parking issues in that area. Councillor Parsons, did you want to speak to this? I, I'm sure that what you're saying is correct and accurate, but I, I don't have a diagram to look at, and it would it would have helped a lot from for us to see it. I know we had it before us. I think in the previous meeting the council, but I don't know where 28 and 26 Francis Street is. I don't know if everyone shares the opinion in that neighborhood or at that school. Um, and I, wouldn't, I, I guess, is it a dire safety thing that if we don't do it until we get those diagrams in front of us? Uh, would be my question is how, 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 how fast do we have to move on this? Well, we've we've already put it in and it's created problems over there. I know that I'm just speaking in general. I did grow up right beside St. Joe's school. Um, I, I I don't need a diagram, so I apologize that it wasn't included. And uh, me and Mayor Gilvesi were out looking at the site and the issues that uh, have kind of came up. And um, it's it, it's really moving to it's removing two no parking signs, um, which are the areas where there's actually gaps between the houses and there able to actually park there um, where now with having the parking spot or the no parking signs there we're actually asking young children elementary school age to walk further distances along the roadway and and stuff like that so it it is a little bit of a logistics uh nightmare over there so i my mother still lives in the house right beside the school so i it, it's a, an area that i know quite well so i know that it's short notice to bring this but i'm just asking that we can temporarily uh, suspend this until uh, we um, get uh, the parking in that area addressed from the school board. So yeah, Councillor Parker and I were running around in the dark the other night there, um, but I picked up my grandchildren twice last week um, at that school. Um, the, uh, the parking lot is too small. The letter's been sent and I, I believe Jonathan's been having communications with the school board, but when the um, town did the construction of the road and went in and put no parking signs anywhere actually exasperated the situation and made it worse and so um this really is just an attempt 
in the interim to allow people to park and then drop their kids off. So the um, the school board also because teachers were coming to school and parents were parked in the parking lot and then staff couldn't park in the parking lot. They were also blocking the parking lot off with pylons. Um, what I don't understand is there was always parking down that street and the town has gone and made and I watched the buses, three buses come in. They take students out for the three buses, those buses leave, four other buses come in, they take those students out and leave, and then they let the walkers out. So the parents waiting for walking kids, they're there for quite a while. Um, number one, you have to get there really early to be able to get a parking spot. Um, and then they let the walkers out. Um, but we've created that extra area for the bus, which is essentially widening, like has widened that section of road. And then we took away all the parking, essentially. So it is a problem that in part, the town made a bit worse. And then hopefully we can fix in the interim. I hope that's a good explanation, but I, I, I was there twice last week. So at the busy hours, any other questions or concerns? Jonathan, do you have a comment? Through to you, Mayor, um, for Council's consideration, just to offer an update, we are meeting with the Capital uh, Works individual for the, the, the local school board this week to discuss the expansion of their parking lot. Um, I won't speak on their behalf, but I can certainly express that they are also frustrated. And I think they are getting the message that, you know, something needs to be done on their part as well. Um, the only caution I would advise too is that the parking bay and the removal of the 30 minute drop off, it, it, it's intended for a drop off or a kiss and drop off. Uh, but certainly we're welcoming the comments if it's not functioning the way that it was intended to. I think it's a complement of many things mainly right now is getting the school board to invest some capital funds uh, and we're willing to talk to them about how that would look like in terms of paving their parking lot if they need our assistance in terms of just some general opinion so we will be meeting them with this week so hopefully by next year being realistic uh, we'll have an expanded parking lot and we can consider other parking restrictions if that's council's dis uh, discretion Thank you very much. Hopefully those discussions will, will, will come to some sort of resolve moving forward. So um, anyways, any other questions, comments, concerns? Seeing none, we'll call the vote. All those in favor? That would be carried with none opposed. And now we're heading over to bylaws. Councillor Parsons. Mayor, just are we going to do a notice of motion for next meeting? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Do you, you've got one. I do have a notice of motion for uh, for staff to and council to consider for next meeting. Um, the um, the ad hoc committee in regards to boundary adjustment uh, have met. How can I word this? Uh, so, so for the clerk to type it. Previous ad hoc committee regarding boundary adjustment be included with the economic development committee. I won't debate that right now. We'll wait till next meeting. Thank you very much. You'll just clarify with the clerk after that. You've got the wording correct. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Is there anyone else that has any notice of motions for the next meeting? Seeing none, now we will move to bylaws. Councilor Parsons. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I moved by myself, seconded by Councilor Luciani. Got a bylaw to amend zoning bylaw number 3295 as amended, that's zone 7-22-17, and a bylaw to appoint directors to the Board of Management of the Tilsmark Business Improvement Area, uh, BIA, and a bylaw to amend bylaw 2020-091, being a bylaw to adopt and maintain a policy with respect to the delegation of the Corporation of the Town of Tilsmark's powers and duties, and a bylaw to amend bylaw 2021-0037, 037, being a bylaw to impose fees for services provided by the Ontario Provincial Police, Oxford County Detachment, relating to the reduction of false security alarms, and a bylaw to assume municipal services in Andrews Crossing Phase 2 subdivision, Register Plan 41M-349, be read for a first, second, and third, and final reading, and the Mayor and Clerk B and are hereby authorized to sign the same and place the corporate seal thereunto. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Parsons. Any questions or comments from Council? 
Seeing none, all those in favor? That would be carried, none opposed. Councillor Rosart, you have conf the confirmed proceedings bylaw. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Move by myself and second by Councillor Spencer that the bylaw 2023-015 to confirm the proceedings of the council meeting held on February 13th, 2023, be read for the first, second, third, and final reading and that the mayor and the clerk be and are hereby authorized to sign the same and place the corporate seal there onto. Questions, comments, seeing none, all those in favor? And that would be carried with none opposed. Items of public interest will start down at Director Columbus. Thank you, Mayor. Through to Council. Uh, just a quick announcement. There's two items I wanted to share. Uh, February is Heart Health Month. So at the TCC on February 15th, we invite the community to join us between 6 and 8 p.m. Uh, for a full schedule of free fitness classes to try at the TCC with our staff. Um, the other one I wanted to note was Family Day. Um, we're having free activities at the museum between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. And our uh, Tilsonburg Community Center will be Community Center will be hosting a free skate from 9 a.m. to 10:30 and a free swim from 11 a.m. to 12:30. So everyone is welcome. Thank you. I have nothing tonight. No hockey. <laughs> It's playoffs, though, I think. <laughs> Maybe next time. Folks, don't forget Wednesday, the 22nd. Come out and see the Girl Guides at the Clock Tower. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to share a little appreciation of another staff member. We've heard some praise tonight about our CAO and our finance and the budget. Um, but I just wanted to add to the list when I had that meeting with Jody from the project, uh, the project coordinator uh, with building um, youth future, she had mentioned that she collaborated and sought guidance from our director of recreation, culture and parks, and she had big, big praise for Julie, uh, that her guidance, direction and inspiration, she said she was so appreciative of her wealth of knowledge. So it's something to acknowledge for sure, and how blessed we are uh, with this town of Tilsonburg staff. Um, and uh, such as Julie, and I just wanted to share that. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, I have just a couple of things. Firstly, um, the town of Tilsonburg welcomes Operation Sharing to town, who will be opening a 12-bed shelter at Avondale Church by the end of February. Opera Operation Sharing has partnered with Avondale Church and the Mill Restaurant for an eight-week pilot project. This pilot project will identify and quantify the need in Tilsonburg for a shelter. The shelter will be fully operated by operation sharing staff. They are not at this time looking for volunteers. I know this is a tough thing. The community is very eager, um, but they have a model in place using trained staff. So thank you, um, but they just, did at this time don't require volunteers. The shelter operates from 7 p.m. to 8 a.m. Um, if you want, you could make monetary donations to operation sharing or goods and monetary donations to other organizations in town that support the effort and also support other members of the community. Um, the Light It Up campaign to fundraise for new Christmas pole lights is underway. You could contact Mark at the BIA if you would like support. And finally, um, I'm gonna talk for a brief moment about smart cities because I think I have probably received a hundred emails, phone calls, messages on Facebook. Um, I have been called some not nice names. I have been told that this council is not transparent and uh, none of that is true. In 2017, the Oxford, Oxford County applied for a contest that was found on Infrastructure Canada, or it was hosted by Infrastructure Canada. You could win $10 million. The context, and I'm going to tell you, I had to do some research because this even predates my time on council. The context of what was classified as a smart city had to do with innovation and data. So Chelsenberg, as you may be aware, has high fiber cable everywhere. It was actually one of the first communities in Ontario to be so connected through data. And that was what this 
program or contest was about. This contest is closed. Uh, recipients, recipients were, were awarded money in 2019 and Tilsonberg didn't even win. However, there is a map floating around this town and on social media and everywhere that has Tilsonberg with a star on it, identified as a smart city. It was, this was done at, in 2017 for this contest. I can assure you this council is extremely transparent and we have not discussed. I want to make people aware this is not the same context as a 15 minute city. So I think people are confusing 15 minute cities versus smart cities. So I hope that we can clear this up and uh, you know stop this from circulating around. There's a lot of rumors. Um, if you do want to reach out to me, please reach out to me. I am asking that people do be respectful though because there is a lot of misinformation in the community about this. So anyways, realistically, Tilsimer, you can drive from one end to the other in 15 minutes. So um, anyways, that's all I have. So uh, we will turn it over to Councillor Spencer for, for closing. Okay. She's all ready to go already. <laughs> Uh, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Parker that the council meeting of February 13th, 2023 be adjourned at, what do we got? Seven. At 7.50 p.m. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. All those in favor. And that's carried with none opposed. <laughs> Good evening, everybody.